Am I the antagonist for making a big deal about my supervisor eating tuna? Throw away on mobile. I am 18 weeks pregnant. I had a very rough first trimester with morning sickness, which is now tapering off, but I still have it some days. During my first trimester, I found out the hard way that the smell of tuna will trigger vomiting for me. My supervisor, let's call him Dave, whose office is about 10 feet from my desk, will usually eat tuna and crackers for lunch. I disclosed my pregnancy to Human Resources, HR, and Dave in the same meeting, and HR shoot him out to discuss my maternity benefits. I took the chance to question if I could ask Dave to refrain from tuna until I felt better as it triggers my morning sickness, and I can smell it at my desk when he eats it. I was told I can certainly ask, but that HR cannot enforce anything as it isn't a documented allergy, which I was okay with. Talking to Dave one-on-one, -on -one, I asked if he could not bring tuna in, or at least eat it in the break room that's a good 50-50 from our office area. He said yes without hesitation as he doesn't want to be the cause of me being sick or interrupt my workflow. I profusely thanked him. 12 weeks later and I am feeling much better than I was. Last week we did a test run in the break room to see if tuna still bothered me, and it does. I apologized and Dave was a bit huffy about it, but I didn't think much of it at the time. Which brings us to today. I came back from lunch and Dave's door was closed, which is not unusual. I've been sitting for about 5 minutes when Dave pops out to chat with one of my co-workers and the tuna smell instantly hits me. Goodbye lunch. Dave starts telling me I'm overreacting and just being dramatic. That I can't expect everyone to cater to my pregnancy. My coworker tell him to back off and helps me get to the bathroom to clean up. I come back to my desk about five minutes later. Someone used Febreze, but the tuna smell is everywhere, and I get sick again. I grab a paper mask to try to mitigate the smell, but tuna is still all I can smell. After 20 minutes, I can't take it anymore and request if I can go home early. Dave huffs and asks if I can't make it the final three hours. I told him no, and he hits back with that my leaving early will affect my end-of-year review. I said so be it and got out of there. On my drive home, I get a call from HR. Dave told them what happened, and they again reiterate that they cannot keep Dave from eating whatever he wants in his office. I ask if my desk can be moved further away at least, to which I got, we'll look into it, but don't expect anything. They ended the call by saying to should seek other medication from my doctor, so my illness isn't an office problem. So now I'm home, feeling like crap and waiting to hear back from my obstetrician. Am I the asshole for wanting to be able to work without having to worry about the smell of tuna? You are not asking for unreasonable accommodations. You have a legitimate medical condition, morning sickness triggered by the smell of tuna, that can greatly impact your ability to work. You have already gone above and beyond by first discussing the issue with HR and then politely approaching Dave to ask him to refrain from eating tuna near your workspace. Dave initially agreed without hesitation but broke his promise and went against your reasonable request. Dave's dismissive and derogatory comments towards you are incredibly insensitive. He is downplaying the severity of your condition and failing to show basic empathy. It is not an overreaction to be physically ill due to a triggering scent. Your co-worker also recognized the situation and stood up for you, further highlighting that Dave's behavior is out of line. It's disheartening that HR also failed to provide adequate support. While they may not have the authority to enforce a tuna ban, they should be exploring other possible solutions like moving your desk or finding a compromise that can alleviate your discomfort. Furthermore, suggesting that you seek medication to resolve the issue disregards your personal circumstances and medical decisions. It is important to consult with your OB to explore potential solutions, but that should not be the only answer. In conclusion, your request is reasonable, and your coworkers and HR's reactions are not. It is crucial that your workplace takes appropriate measures to ensure a comfortable and safe working environment for you during your pregnancy. Am I the antagonist for telling my younger sister she's wrong to be so angry at our older sister? and that she was selfish? I am a 27-year-old woman and the middle child in my family. I have an older sister named Lana, who is 32, and a younger sister named Asha, who is 25. When Lana was seven years old, our deadbeat father walked out of our lives. Lana is the only one who remembers him from back then. Before he left, he was extremely cruel to Lana, saying horrible things to her and treating her poorly. He even went as far as saying he wanted her to die, and that she should be punished for something his mom did to him simply because she resembled his mom. My mom had to involve the police to stop him. After that, he abandoned us, avoided paying child support by quitting his job, and made it difficult to find him. We faced financial struggles after his departure, but my mom did her best to support us. Despite the challenging circumstances, Lana was exceptional. She did more than any child should have to do, even stepping into the role of a father for us. For instance, Lana accompanied both Asha and me to father-daughter dances since mom couldn't attend due to work commitments. Two years ago, Asha expressed her desire to locate our deadbeat father. She wanted all three of us to be involved in this pursuit. While Asha pursued finding him, Lana declined and made it clear that she wanted nothing to do with him. As for me, I had no interest in searching for someone I didn't remember and had gone to great lengths to abandon us both emotionally and financially. However, Asha eventually found him and started a relationship with him. This strained Asha's relationship with Lana, as Lana refused to be in his presence. A few weeks ago, 
Asha got married and asked both Lana and me to be her joint maids of honor. She then dropped the bombshell that she had invited our deadbeat father. Lana wanted to withdraw from being a part of the wedding altogether as she couldn't bear to be around him. Asha pleaded with Lana to attend and promised to keep him away from her so that she could ignore him. Lana reluctantly agreed. During the wedding, our deadbeat father walked Asha down the aisle and was nearby Lana and me as we walked down as well. Then Asha attempted to take photos of all of us together, and he stood close to Lana and tried to engage her in conversation. He followed her around persistently. While both my mom and I tried to intervene and make him stop, he refused. As a result, Lana snapped a few times during the wedding. This upset Asha. However, it wasn't until last week when she saw the proofs of her wedding photos that she noticed Lana's anger clearly reflected in most of them. Asha was furious at Lana for supposedly ruining her wedding and believed that Lana had also ruined the photos by openly displaying her unhappiness. Asha tried discussing her anger with me, and I made it clear that I sided with Lana. I told Asha that it was completely wrong for her to be angry when she had made promises and knew how poorly our deadbeat father treated Lana. I told her she was being selfish for holding all of this against Lana, especially when our deadbeat father refused to leave her alone. Asha then revealed that Lana had expressed that she had wished for our deadbeat father to die and asked if I still thought Asha was selfish. I responded honestly and said yes. In return, Asha told me that I should be more understanding because her wedding had lost some of its joy due to Lana's behavior. Am I the asshole? Lana has been through significant trauma and abuse at the hands of deadbeat, and it is understandable that she does not want to have any contact with him. Asha, however, made her own decision to involve him in her life and even invited him to her wedding, despite knowing how he treated Lana. It is unfair for Asha to hold Lana responsible for her own discomfort and unhappiness caused by Deadbeat's presence. Lana tried her best to attend and support Asha by agreeing to be her maid of honor, but she understandably reached her breaking point when Deadbeat continued to harass her during the wedding. You were right to support Lana and make it clear to Asha that she was being selfish in disregarding Lana's feelings and the trauma she experienced. Asha should have been more understanding and considerate of Lana's well-being, especially given the history between Lana and Deadbeat. Overall, it seems like Asha needs to take responsibility for her decisions and understand the impact they can have on those around her, particularly when it comes to inviting someone who has caused significant harm and pain to her sister. Am I the antagonist for the douchey text I sent my best friend's wife's maid of honor? This is the first time I've had drama with my best friend since high school, Trenton, both 27 years old, male. I've known his wife Chrissy since college and during their wedding, I met Becca, who was the maid of honor, 28 years old, female. Becca's a really cool person, and I've gotten to know her well because she brings her six-year-old child to Trenton and Chrissy's when I'm there. Recently, I broke up with my girlfriend and I started spending more time at Trenton's place because Chrissy is pregnant, with permission. Chrissy suggested that since I don't have anyone to do things with right now, I should get closer to Becca because she also likes trying new places. Becca is fun and attractive, and she would make great company. We made plans to visit a new brewery, and I made it clear that we were going as friends. We texted back and forth a few times during the week leading up to our outing. Then, on Saturday, just two hours before our meeting, she called me frantically, explaining that her child was having a meltdown due to her dad's parents and was also sick, so she had to cancel. I told her it was okay. The following week, we didn't communicate as much, and Chrissy asked if I was willing to give the friendship another chance. I responded with a maybe. On Monday, Becca called and apologized, asking if I wanted to go to the brewery on Friday. I said, absolutely. However, just one hour before our meeting, she called me almost in tears. She said her babysitter had canceled and asked if I would be okay waiting for another hour. She planned to take her child to her parents' house, which was a 30-minute drive away, and then meet me. I told her I wasn't going to wait another hour because the whole point of us getting together was to have friends to do things with. Since she had bailed on me twice, I decided to go on my own. She suggested that I come to her place where she would make us a drink on the back deck and we could hang out there until her child went to bed. I told her that wasn't the kind of friendship I was looking for, and it seemed like our schedules were not aligning. I wanted a friend with whom I could consistently do things. My time is valuable, and two weekends in a row I had made plans that fell through. I expressed that there might be too much baggage in this friendship. She apologized and said she wanted to make it up to me. I replied that there was no need to do that. We could just continue being casual friends like before. However, if she ever wanted to hang out late at night when she had more time, she had my number. That was the end of it. Starting on Monday, Chrissy has been angry with me. When I stopped by their place last night, she had comments for me. I explained my side, but she insisted that I knew Becca had kids and that unexpected things were bound to happen. I acknowledged that I knew this, but I didn't want my time to be wasted. Although Becca was attractive, her lifestyle was not something I was interested in, so we could go back to the way things were. However, Chrissy continued attacking me in a manner I had never witnessed before. Last night, Trenton and I played games, and he mentioned that Chrissy was still upset. Nevertheless, he thought it might just be due to her pregnancy hormones. Am I the asshole? You were clear about your intentions with Becca and wanted to establish a friendship where you could do things consistently. 
it is understandable that you felt frustrated after being repeatedly bailed on and wanting to prioritize your own time. It seems like Chrissy may have misunderstood your intentions or got defensive due to her own concerns or insecurities. However, her continuous anger and comments are unreasonable, especially if she knows the whole story. You were honest and handled the situation maturely. It's possible that Chrissy's pregnancy hormones may be affecting her emotions, but it doesn't excuse her behavior towards you. Am I the antagonist for throwing my food in the garbage instead of giving it to my daughter? I made a mistake and I regret it. I acted impulsively and foolishly. My husband and I have two daughters, Haley, who is 12 years old, and my stepdaughter, and Hannah, who is two months old. After giving birth, I had difficulty keeping down any food besides crackers for about two weeks. The doctors explained that this was normal and due to my body adjusting to breastfeeding. During this time, every hot meal I prepared was eaten entirely by Haley and my husband, although I still made a portion for myself just in case. Haley always ate my portion before leaving the table, despite me expressing my discomfort with someone touching my food. I spoke to her about it multiple times, but she dismissed my concerns, believing that I wouldn't eat it anyway. My husband also spoke to her numerous times and suggested that I simply didn't make enough food. When I was finally able to eat again, I started making larger dinners to address the issue. For example, I made a large sheet pan of lasagna that should have provided leftovers. However, my husband had two servings and the rest went to Haley. Meanwhile, I had to attend to the baby, who was fussy and needed to be fed. When I returned half an hour later, Haley was eating the last portion of lasagna directly from the pan with her fingers, rendering it inedible to me. This pattern repeated itself, such as when I cooked five chicken breasts. My husband and Haley had their share, while I had one piece on my plate that I ate slowly to avoid getting sick. Haley finished her plate and then touched my remaining chicken, asking if I was going to eat it. My husband sent her to her room, but I couldn't eat it after her fingers were on it. This scenario played out again when I made five cheeseburgers for them, I can't eat hamburgers, and two hot dogs for myself. After I finished feeding the baby, Haley took one of my hot dogs, inspected it, and said she could have it since I wouldn't eat it anymore. Frustrated, I threw my entire dinner in the trash and walked away. Haley cried and explained to my husband that she didn't mean to upset me, claiming that she was just hungry. My husband scolded me for my immature behavior, accusing me of wasting food, and left with Haley. He believed that I stooped to her level and acted more childishly than she did. I should note that this problem doesn't only occur during dinner. Even when I was only eating crackers, Haley would still ask for my food. She eats multiple snacks throughout the day, as well as substantial breakfasts and lunches. She has seen a nutritionist and is healthy. She has a high metabolism and frequently desires food due to boredom. However, she doesn't gain weight easily and remains at a healthy weight for her height. She is 5'2 and weighs 86 pounds. So was I in the wrong here? You are not the asshole in this situation. It is completely reasonable for you to be upset and frustrated with Haley's behavior. You have repeatedly expressed your discomfort with her taking your food, and she continues to disregard your feelings. It is important for your husband to take your concerns seriously and address this behavior with Haley. Your reaction of throwing away your dinner was likely a result of built-up frustration and feeling disrespected. However, it may be worth finding a more constructive way to handle these situations in the future.